I just received the Genuine Leather Large Print Ultra, Ultra Thin from the Lockman Foundation. I bought this one off of christianbook.com and it took forever to get here. I already had the blue one, the blue leather text. I got that one from shop.lockman.com and it came real fast. So uh, you may wanna go that way rather than waiting an extra couple of weeks to get your stuff. But um, anyway, this is uh, just a look at the genuine leather. It came in this box here, uh, which is nice. The, uh, the other one did not come in a box. It came in a paper sleeve that sort of, that looked like this box, but there's nothing on the bottom. So the Bible just sort of, or there's nothing on the sides. So the spine is showing and the outer edge here shows. And, uh, and I think my wife, beloved, uh, she threw that away without permission. Uh, anyway, the, uh, anyways, this box I will keep. And I can put my genuine leather right in there if I want to. I think that blue one is destined for a rebind. Um, this black one might be as well, but I sort of bought it with the idea that the black one would not be a rebind, but the blue one would be. So um, I have not opened it yet. This is my first time opening it. The uh, ribbons are tucked right down here in the bottom. And let's see how the ribbons come, first of all. Yeah, that's okay. So a red and a black, just waiting for us to get into them, I guess. This is the uh, genuine leather. You can see where they've pressed a design in here. And um, I, I'm guessing that's pig, pig skin. Uh, that's usually what they use for genuine leather, whereas um, Holman, they might use something like a cheaper goat skin for their genuine leather. Um, it was wrapped, or it was uh, packaged in a, a clear cellophane sleeve inside the box. And the box came from Christian Book in a uh, brown paper envelope. So uh, we'll open this up, and we've got... Just, just like the the blue leather text edition, we have the uh, the black th synthetic liner, uh, which should last longer than just paper, I suppose. And uh, I'm, I'm, you probably don't care about the corner work of pigskin, but uh, anyway, if you do, there it is. It's a uh, it's not a edge lined product, so you can see where it's pressed down here, and this. One's, one side of the paper is the same sheet of paper as, as this other synthetic, so it just goes right on over. And then we have presentation page, nothing on that side, which I guess you could, sometimes people like to write the Roman Road of Salvation or a note or something like that there, so that, that's a pretty nice feature. Marriages, uh, you know, some people have more than one, I don't know. Uh, anyway, we usually don't fill out this stuff uh, unless it's like an expensive, well, even then, maybe some people don't write. I don't know if people use this. Maybe some people do. Um, births, might put your born again date in there. We have deaths. Uh, hopefully you're not writing your own information there. Uh, occasions to remember. Okay. Um, New American Standard Bible. And then we get into the, what is this is 30 GSM paper. Not too shabby. The best thing about this, I think, is, uh, well, it, it has a nice typesetting there by 2K Denmark. But uh, the nicest thing about this is that it's line matched now. This is the first product that, uh, that I know of where Foundation Press has line matched their Bibles. So big improvement. If, if only that, then it's a big improvement. Um, we have the fourfold aim, which is, I believe that's the same, um, but I feel like they have bumped number three up above number two uh, in their priorities. But um, anyway, uh, there is a preface to everything, principles of translation, gender accuracy is new. They're not gender inclusive, gender accurate, okay? So get it right, people men and women forward the word brethren will now be brothers and sisters 
just in case you didn't know what brethren meant. Um, you know, they like to have, uh, or I guess they're seeking to uh, make it more appealing to the common speaker. Uh, but what if you're 60 or 70 years old? Are you not allowed to buy this Bible because you understand what the word brethren means? Now, of course, that's just a just a joke. That's not that funny. All right, um, you can sort of get a look at the ghosting here, which you would recognize immediately. Hey, that is uh, right on par for Lightman ghosting, but it's line matched now. And you, the one thing that you could could say about the uh, typesetting here is that it's not completely justified. So you even see the uh, the ghosting after the word over. And so in verse two, um, after desolate or after over or after the, um, you see the ghosting on the back side. But if it was justified, you'd have more space in between these words and you might see the ghosting in between the words instead of after the words. So maybe uh, having it where it's left justified and not, not uh, fully justified is a better decision. Um, so people are actually much more impressed with this Bible than they expected to be. And, um, and I, you know what? It, it's nice because you have the cross, center cross references, which is fine. But then they put your footnotes here at the bottom, which is great. Uh, because if you're looking for footnotes, you don't want to have to dig through the, uh, the references here in the middle to try to find them. All the footnotes are right here at the bottom. And I think that is a welcome improvement. Uh, it, it should just be like that, right? Um, so let's find my ribbon and evaluate its quality. See, uh, we got this black tail band here, decent looking tail band. Here is my red ribbon. The Old Testament ribbon is red. Some people like for their New Testament ribbon to be red. And for, for example, the uh, Lockman SCR that came out, they, uh, they had three ribbons and the first two were black. And then the, uh, the third one, the New Testament ribbon was red for the blood of Jesus, I suppose. Or, I mean, you get the idea, red letter text, something like that, right? I uh, find my black ribbon. The ribbons ain't bad. Not too bad. Got a little impression left by the ribbon here on the paper. That happens. Um, it's right in the New Testament page. So you, you can see the impression left by the ribbon there. It happens. Oh, there we go. Take a look at our black ribbon. And uh, it is a... Let's see, it's shiny and satin. So I can get a good picture of the sheen there. And I don't know if it's the same thing or not on the opposite side. That look like the same thing to you? Not quite, not quite the same exact thing on this opposite side. Shinier on one side than the other, right? Okay, um, this Bible cost me $56.36. The other one is less expensive. Um, there is no, um, there's no under art. We do have the gold. This gold looks a little bit darker than, uh, or richer than the normal Lockman gold. Um, so maybe that's a little bit of improvement. Let's see the bottom side here. Yeah. Um, older Lockmans had this dull kind of gold color. I like a little bit richer, um, more yellowy than brown kind of gold. Okay, this is a black letter text. So uh, some of the features of this are listed on the box. Uh, center column reference, footnotes at the bottom, paragraph format, uh, color maps, and black letter text. And this is the genuine leather edition. 
Um, here's a little note on the NASB. Here's the top side of it. And here is what's on the left side of the, of the box. Okay. Let's take a look at their maps. Oh, first I want to go to poetry. So pro Proverbs may be good enough. Um, yeah, you see, I love how the verse number is out there on the left. I think the whole Bible should be like that. I know this is paragraph format, so you're not going to get it. But whenever you do a verse by verse Bible, I wish all of the verse numbers were just out on the left. And these verse numbers are pretty bold as they are. But um, whenever you just stick them out on the left like that, away from the text, I think that is perfect. Um, I don't know about all the indentions there. But uh, anyway, I, I like how the verse numbers are out. Um, whenever you hit start a new book, so we have the end of Mark here. Uh, I guess I could show you this. It would be a perfect opportunity. A few, 1620, a few late manuscripts in ancient versions contain this paragraph, usually after verse 8. A few have it at the end of the chapter. And so we're still dealing with the brackets there. Uh, but look how it's italicized. Interesting that they chose to do it that way. I wonder if John uh, 8 is done that way. Let's go over to John. So the Pericope of Adultera. Um, we have, okay, so you go to chapter 8 and you back up one verse. And then it starts at 53. Uh, and everyone went to his home, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. All this story, if we look at note one on verse 53, is, here it is, later manuscripts add the story of the adulterous woman, numbering it as John 7, 53 through 8, 11. And, of course, they keep it in here. And um, And I think there may have been one where the text was, the whole verse was moved to the bottom, that might be in 1 John. I uh, wonder if I could find that real quick. 1 John, where are you at? It's the uh, Johannium, or the, the comma Johannium. Uh, what is that, 3, is it 312? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, I don't remember. I should have looked it up before I started doing this, shouldn't I? Okay. 5-8. Okay, there it is. 5-8. Uh, verse 7, for there are three that testify. Note the verse th that there's a footnote on 8. The spirit and the water and the blood and the three are in agreement. If we receive testimony and so on. But the footnote on 5.8 says what the King James says, a few late manuscripts add in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one, and there are three that testify on the earth, the Spirit. Um, all right, so that is not in there. It's not in brackets. So that just shows you, I mean, they, they make decisions, um, and that's, that's how a Bible works. you got to make decisions. The uh, topical index is not the same as a uh, glossary or a concordance. Uh, it may be more helpful for you than a regular concordance. But it's, it's pretty big, and it's uh, easy to find your words because everything else is sort of tabbed in. And, uh, and it just sort of keeps on going, going and going and going. Let's get through this. And then uh, after the topical index, we come to book introductions. And it is, I think it is true that book introductions probably belong at the introduction of each book rather than at the, at the back of the Bible. But um, I guess doing this way allows you to reprint this Bible without the book introductions if you wanted to. 
But uh, anyway, there, every one of them has its own little paragraph introduction. And so um, there you have it. Parables of Jesus. There they are. Miracles of Jesus. Reminds me sort of of the uh, Zondervan. Important events in Christ's life according to the Gospels. Hold on, maps. Hadn't gotten to you yet. And that continues on. All right, here are the maps. You recognize these maps immediately because they're colored. Uh, they are... The uh, Zonder, the uh, I'm sorry, not Zonder. They are the Lockman Brown. So we we got these Lockman Browns or beige Lockman beige color maps, and uh, they are not entirely appealing. But um, and it's on cardstock. So is it glossy card cardstock? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of gloss. Not too shiny though. Um, more glossy than matte, but not too glossy, I don't think. United Kingdom. We have the Herodian Kingdom in the time of Christ. Here's two. Here's a two for one. Old Testament Jerusalem, New Testament Jerusalem. How about that? I guess I ought to turn it sideways, huh? That's the way. Well, that's interesting. How you gotta you gotta turn them sideways to see it, but so be it. And then the ministry of Jesus. Get you a good look in here. Zoom in. All right, and then this will be um, Paul's missionary journeys. See that glare? See the glare moving up and down. All right, there we go. And then the back side of the um, little liner page. And that's all there is to this Bible. Um, I've been enjoying this blue and reading, reading it to my kids. I've not really noticed, I mean, there are, there are certain things that you notice, but um, sometimes you just don't even notice the changes at all. Like uh, I was reading, um, I was reading Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and uh, uh, he might say, uh, "Blessed are the poor, uh, for they will inherit the earth," or "Blessed are the blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth." The word "will" is now replacing "shall," but I didn't even notice it until I went back and thought about it. So um, anyway, there's a lot of little changes in there. The word sojourn is now changed to uh, resided. But um, there's a lot of little words that you can, you won't really notice the change hardly at all. Um, the brothers and sisters change. Well, that's going to be obvious to everyone. But um, it's really not that bad. And it's, it's not like uh, it really isn't gender neutral either. Um, they say gender accurate. I think it would be most accurate if the reader experienced the um, uh, the ambiguity that comes with the word Adelphoi, rather than having it made clear to us. I feel like you know, even in 2020, when um, you know everybody has to have things spelled out, I feel like we are probably just as capable as the rest of humanity has been for the last thousand, several thousand years of deciding that um, the word Adelphoi can mean can apply both to male and female. But uh, if you need to spell that out, I guess so be it. Um, anyway, this is a uh, this is a nice Bible, and I think the the line matching. You can see how bad it would be if it wasn't line matched. But since it is line matched, it's a lot easier to read this Bible. Um, I've noticed a blue uh, tint down the middle of these of these Bibles. Um, I'm sitting under a yellow light right now, so I'm not really getting it. But uh, sometimes you can, maybe if there's a... I don't know if I'll be able to catch it here 
for you or not. But sometimes you can just notice a faint blue tint down the middle. But uh, it's it's not really distracting. And uh, anyway, I think you should get one of these Bibles. It's a it's a go for me. I think you will like it, especially if you have kids. Uh, read it to your children. Um, they're not gonna they're not gonna know that it used to say sojourn, but now it says revised. So uh, your kids will love it, and ultimately, isn't that what you want? So um, NASB 2020 is probably here to stay. It's uh, I don't think it'll fail like the uh, TNIV did. But um, anyway, go after it. It's a good Bible. Take care now. Bye-bye then.